Hey guys, this is Aptos Top, and today we're going to talk about top 10 medical professionals who were actually killers. Take a seat and let's start. On 10th place, we have Joseph Mengel, the angel of death, who operated without anesthesia, set twins together and killed thousands. Dr. Joseph Mengel was a CC Psychian at Nazi concentration camp in Auschwitz during the Second World War. As Jewish prisoners were led off the trains into the camp, Dr. Mengel would stand in his white coat with his arms outstretched, earing him the nickname Angel of Death. The doctor's job was to examine each person to see if he or she was healthy enough to enter the forced labor camp or not. Those deemed unfit work were immediately led to the gas chambers. The doctor was also known for his harsh solutions to minor problems. However, it was not the doctor's role in these crimes against humanity that earned his notoriety. Rather, it was his fondness for performing forced medical experiments of the prisoners, especially on twins and children. Mengel operated on people without using anesthesia, often removing their organs, amputating limbs, injective dyes into eyeballs in attempt to change the eye color and sewing twins together to form monsters conjoined siblings. Most of Mengel's patients died on the operating table or quickly afterward due to infection. After the war, Mengel fled to South America, where he lived until his death in 1979. Next one is Jane Toppen, the nurse who killed at least 31 patients with morphine. Jane Toppen was an American nurse who killed 31 of her patients by administering lethal injections of morphine. Over the course of two decades, while working in the Boston, Massachusetts area, Toppen may have actually killed upwards of 70 people. As a young, attractive 26-year-old nurse, Toppen was able to hide her dark obsession with death from nearly everyone she worked with. Even as a nurse student, she would alter her patients' medicine dosages to see what would happen to their nervous system, and once she became a registered nurse, she took her skills to the next level. Toppen finally slipped up when she murdered a man whom she was caring for as a private nurse. Along with Alden Davis, Toppen also killed two of his daughters, leaving a third daughter to go to police and start an investigation. Once one of the Davis girls was exhumated, authorities discovered that she had been poisoned and it didn't take much to figure out who was behind the treachery. After Toppen was caught, she's quoted as saying that she wanted to kill more people than anyone who had ever lived before. She confessed to 31 of her murderers and provided details to solve them. Since Toppen had a well-documented history of attempted suicide, she was committed to a mental hospital where she lived for 40 years until her death in 1938. On the next place, we have Michael Swango, the doctor who killed at least 30 patients, poisoned co-workers, then killed some more in Africa. Though American doctor Michael Swango appeared to be handsome and congenial in nature, signs of his inner mental instability were noticeable to colleagues even while he was attending medical school. Swango's classmates observed that he often worked on a scrapbook containing images of horrific bloody disasters and they worried that some of the basic anatomical knowledge expected from a Scythian was sorely lacking. However, no one knew how scary Swango really was until they discovered years later that he had killed between 30 and 60 of his patients. A police search of Swango's home found chemicals, weapons, and handwritten recipes for poison. He was arrested and served two years of his five-year sentence. Incredibly, after being released for good behavior, he was able to move to a different state and lie his way into another job in the medical field. Swango's past caught up with him wherever he went, until he finally forget his traditionals again to continue his murderous practice in a remote hospital in Africa. After poisoning more patients in Africa, Swango skipped out of the insurance scandal and hid in Europe for several years. 
When he finally tried to re-enter the United States in 1997, officials were waiting for him at the airport. He was arrested and sentenced to life in prison without parole. On the next place, we have John Botkin Adams, a doctor who made over a hundred elder patients include him in their wills. Dr. John Botkin Adams was a British doctor who, between 1946 and 1956, may have been responsible for the death of over 160 of his patients. Dr. Adams was a general practitioner who was especially friendly towards his elder female patients. He would dote on them to the point where they seemingly decided to rewrite their wills. In fact, 132 of these patients added Dr. Adams to their wills just before they passed away. The interesting thing about this doctor is that he was never found guilty of murder or other professional negligence, leading some of people to wonder if Dr. Adams was helping his patients euthanize themselves. However, a later trial regarding 13 additional offenses, including prescription fraud, lying on cremation forms, obstructing a police search and failing to keep a dangerous drugs register earned him a guilty verdict and stripped him of his medical degree. After two failed attempts, Adams got his license back in 1961. After he was acquitted on the murder charges, Adams kept practicing medicine until he died of natural causes. On the next place, we have Dorothea Weddingham, the nurse who was hanged after killing a mother and her daughter. Though Dorothea Weddingham was not registered nurse, she ran a nursing home near Nottingham, England for many years. Weddingham, who was a wife and mother to five children, began taking elderly invalids into her home in the early 1930s. Two of these women were mother and daughter. First the mother died and shortly afterward the younger woman also passed away. It was then that their family discovered that the younger woman had recently changed her will to leave everything to Weddingham. She had also added some busier details, such as desire to be cremated immediately after her death, and she requested that her family not be notified when she died. In order to have a cremation to doctor's signature, we are required to sign off on her death certificate. The first doctor was well known to Weddingham and signed off with no issues. The second doctor was suspicious especially in light of the woman's recent changes to her will. He ordered an autopsy of her body and found large amounts of morphine in her system. After examining the decayed mother's remains, they found that she had also died from a morphine overdose. Weddingham was found guilty of murder and insurance fraud and was sentenced to death. As a young mother of five children, one of whom was just three months old and still breastfeeding, the executant drew the 10,000 protesters who chanted, Stop this mother murder. Weddingham was hanged for her crimes in 1936. On the next place, we have H.H. H. Holmes, America's first serial killer. H. H. Holmes was an American psychian who is known to have murdered between 20 and 100 people, though his victims may have actually numbered as high as 200 people. During his schooling at the University of Michigan Medical School, Holmes began to steal bodies from the lab and take out bogus insurance policies on them. He would then disfigure the corpses and claim that they had been in accident so that he could cash out the policies. Holmes moved to Chicago and began to associate with nefarious characters. He also became a polygamist, keeping three wives at the same time, none of whom knew about the others. After swindling and widow out of the, her husband's pharmacy business, Holmes built a huge hotel that took up three storefronts and resembled a castle. He forced his employees to take out life insurance policies in which he was beneficiary and then he started murdering them to collect the money. Holmes favored female victims and his employees and hotel guests frequently disappeared. Since the Chicago World Fair was taking place, it was not altogether unusual for people to come and go in the Chicago area. 
so his crimes went unnoticed for quite some time. In the hotel, homes had built rooms that were rigged with gas lines along with airtight welds and other horrific torture devices. He would torture and kill people in the basement, then dismember some of the bodies and sell their organs and skeletons to medical research lab. After he was finally caught, Holmes was sentenced to death by hanging in 1897. Next place is taken by Giant Petal, the surgeon who's linked to 87 death, yet found not guilty twice. Though American surgeon Giant Petal has been linked to about 87 deaths among his patients between the years of 2003 and 2005, he has been found not guilty by the Australian court system not once, but twice. On the next place we have Beverly Elliott, the nurse who injected children with air bubbles and insulin. Beverly Elliott is a nurse who worked in the children's ward at Grantham and Kesteven Hospital in England. During the course of 59 horrible days in 1991, Elliott murdered four children in the hospital by administrating lethal doses of insulin and injecting air bubbles into their bloodstreams. She also attempted to murder three other children and badly injured six more. Elliot was caught and sentenced to 13 life sentences for her crimes. Though we'll never know exactly why Alice started murdering her young patients in the hospital. In prison, she was diagnosed with Munchausen syndrome by proxy. Next place is taken by Arnithin Nesset the nursing home manager who murdered 22 patients and is now free. While working as a nurse and nursing home manager, Nurgian Arnifin Nesset murdered at least 22 patients. He also committed document forgery and embezzlement and was convicted of attempted murder as well. It's possible that his victims numbered closer to 130 but many of those cases could not be definitely pinned to him. After a series of suspicious deaths in the nursing home, he managed Nesset confessed to the murders of 27 of his patients by injecting them with succumethasone chloride, a muscle relaxer. He later resented his confession. He was convicted of poisoning 22 patients in 1983, sentenced to only 21 years in prison, which was the maximum sentence under, under the Norwegian law at the time. Nesset served just 12 of those years and is now free. And the last one is Harold Chipman. A British doc who killed over 200 people for the money. In 20s, Dr. Harold Chipman became the only British doctor to be successfully prosecuted for the murder of his patients. Chipman was found guilty of murdering 15 patients, though an investigation known as the 2002 Chipman inquiry concluded that he had actually murdered an additional 200 people for which he was never charged. Like other doctors on this list, it, it was the nurses who worked alongside Chipman who first noticed that many of his patients were dying after being alone with him in their rooms. They were also concerned about how many cremation forms the doctor needed to have signed by a second psychian. After alerting the authorities, yet another cursory investigation turned up nothing. So the doctor went about his division business unabated. It was not until Shipman made a huge mistake that he was finally caught. He had killed an older patient and forget a new will, cutting the woman's children out and leaving himself a very large monetary inheritance. The patient's daughter insisted on investigation, and when the patient's body was exhumed, coroners discovered that she had overdosed on a form of medical heroin. After searching Shipman's home, they found the typewriter that he had used to forge her new will. Once Shipman was arrested, an investigation exposed his pattern of administrating lethal overdoses of diamorphine, signing patients' death certificates, and then falsifying medical records to prove that they had been in poor health. Shipman was sentenced to 15 consecutive life sentences in 2000. He later committed suicide by hanging himself in his jail cell in 2004. 
These were 10 medical professionals who were actually killers. Tell us which one scares you the most. Like and subscribe. Bye.